What is up guys, I hope everyone is doing well. So as you know, last week I did a build guide on the £600 Ryzen 1200 PC. So today is the day where I am going to show you how well it actually performs. And honestly, for £600, this little budget PC is absolutely perfect. And obviously, you could go ahead and save yourself some money by swapping out some of the other parts. So as always, I would just like to thank box.co.uk and of course Cooler Master for providing the parts to make this video possible. So a massive shout out to them. And as always, the links will be down below in the description in case you want to go ahead and pick them up. So for those of you who forget all about the parts, etc. Let's just go ahead and run over them. So the process that I went ahead with was the Ryzen 3 1200, but as you know, for around £27 more, you could go ahead and get the 1300X. So if that makes sense to you, then definitely go for it. For the cooler, we are just using the stock Wraith cooler as it does an absolutely awesome job even when you overclock it, so it will save us some money. The motherboard I chose is the MSI B350 Gaming Plus. This motherboard is packed with all the features you will need and overall it just looks great and matches the black and red colour scheme that I was aiming for. For the RAM, I used 8GB of HyperX Predator and obviously RAM prices are pretty crazy at the minute but this kit is not too bad at all and fast enough at 3000MHz. The graphics card that I opted for is the MSI 1050Ti Gaming X. There are cheaper 1050Ti's out there, so choose as you please. I just wanted to stick with the red and black colour scheme and I know that this can get the job done, especially when it comes to performance and cooling. For the storage, I picked up a 120GB Kingston UV400. If your budget allows for it, you could also go ahead and include this 2TB Seagate Fire CUDA. But the 128GB will be fine for the OS and maybe two games depending on how big they are. But of course, just go with whatever your budget allows. Power supply wise, I have chosen the Cooler Master Master Watt Lite 400. I have been using Cooler Master power supplies in my builds for some time now and I have never been let down yet so it's definitely a good option. So last up, the case that I will be using is probably one of the best value for money cases I have seen in a long time. And honestly, I personally love it, and that is the Cooler Master Masterbox Lite 5 RGB. For £59 here in the UK, you are getting tempered glass side panels, three 120mm RGB fans up front, and honestly, the case just looks fantastic. For that price, I wouldn't look any further. So as I mentioned in the build guide, I was going to go ahead and overclock this processor, and I managed to get 3.8GHz without any trouble at all. There is no doubt in my mind that I could have pushed this to 3.9 or even 4 if I wished, and a lot of people were concerned about the case in both part 1 and part 2, saying that the airflow wasn't sufficient enough, but you will be very surprised when you learn that even overclocked on a stock Wraith cooler, the highest that the temperatures went were actually 63 degrees, and honestly, you can't really complain with that. If you were to go ahead and stick another cooler, I'm pretty sure that you could go ahead and lower these temps if you wish, but 63 degrees is absolutely nothing and perfectly fine as we are never going to be taxing our system as much as obviously fully stress testing it will. Okay, so most importantly, let's jump in and see how well this actually performs while gaming. Obviously, I went ahead and done all the benchmarks at 1080p, so just remember that. So let's jump in and see what we got. So starting out with GTA 5, all the settings were set to high, with MSAA at times 4, shadows at softest, and we achieved an average of 85 FPS, so GTA 5 is certainly a game you could enjoy on this system without any trouble. Next up was Metro Last Light, a benchmark that I use in all of my tests. I set the quality to very high, along with the tessellation, and we managed an average FPS of 69. Moving on to Rise of the Tomb Raider, I used the high preset and we managed an average FPS of 76, so again this is pretty impressive for this little CPU. Moving on to some esports titles, I fired up my favourite game CSGO, and at high settings I achieved an average FPS of 178, so even if you want to play some serious competitive games, you will have no trouble. So as you can imagine, Overwatch was just as impressive, managing to achieve 135 FPS and played with absolutely no issues at all. And honestly, you could probably go ahead and crank the resolution up to 1440p on these titles if you really wished. So last up, I had to go ahead and try Battlegrounds of course, even although it's not very well optimised. But with everything set to medium, we achieved 76 FPS, so it's super playable and honestly an enjoyable experience on this PC. So as you can see, 
This little budget beast is absolutely capable of handling most games at 1080p without any trouble at all. So if you're looking for a budget PC and what is probably a terrible time to build a PC due to all the prices etc, then this is definitely a viable option and will honestly last you some time as long as you are happy gaming at 1080p of course. And as I mentioned, you could even crank esports titles up like CSGO and Overwatch to 1440p and I'm pretty sure you'll still get great frame rates. So if you have any questions about this build guys, let me know down below and if you have suggestions for the next build, also let me know down below. There is a few builds coming up and another build guide that I will be starting pretty much in the next week or so, so definitely make sure you hit that subscribe button. As always guys, thank you so much for tuning in, stay safe, be kind to each other, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.